Hi there, my name is Richard, and this tutorial is going to concern and be about the radial menu that is included with your Intuos tablet. Now, there are two styles of tablets that Wacom makes. Well, there's more than two, but the two can, the, you see most often are the Intuos and the Intuos Pros. The Intuos are the consumer products, and there's three of them. There's the Intuos Small Pen and Touch, there's the Intuos Medium Pen and Touch, then there's the lower end one, the Intuos Pen. Now the difference between the three is that the pen is just kind of a starter product. It doesn't have this little knob on top which is an eraser, so you've got to use the eraser tool from the options bar, from the toolbar in any program, and it doesn't have the touch feature on it. I'm using the Intuos small pen and touch to do this tutorial, and you see, that's my finger moving the cursor around. Kind of cool, huh? Um, but I won't do that because it becomes distracting for some people. Okay, so you get the radial menu with this. And it's an awesome radial menu. Uh, let me show you what the radial menu is. There we go. That is the radial menu. The radial menu is, uh, it provides a bunch of keyboard shortcuts in this pie. And there's eight slices in the pie. And you can have any eight keyboard shortcuts you want on there. The keyboard shortcuts can be on your desktop. They can be on any program. Most of the time, they're aiming them at the uh, digital editing programs, digital drawing, digital painting programs like Photoshop or Painter or ArtRage or something like that, or Elements, PaintShop Pro. You can uh, get a lot with those ones, but you can use it on the desktop as well, and you can use it on any other program. So let me show you something here. I'll show you what I mean by that. I've got a program here called XMind. It's a mind mapping program, and I was kind of doing this to, to map out this tutorial. What am I going to do with it? And if I go, okay, I've got a new title here, and I, sh I shouldn't have that title here. Whoops, what did I do? Okay, move it across here. It's not doing anything. It's not needed. Now, I've created a radial menu for this program, and if I just put my cursor somewhere here, press the top button on my pen, and I can go to here, and I can delete that. That Whoops, I should have had it activated. There we go. Now, if I do it, I can, it'll, it'll go away. There we go. That's how convenient this thing is. So when I'm working on this program, I just hit this and I can do things like make a new topic, enter a title, a subtopic, delete, undo, select brothers, children, export. If I wanted to export this, I just click it and it gives me all these options that I can, uh, the way I can export the thing. So it's really convenient, it's really handy to have that in any program. So, so that's kind of neat. Now I said desktop, now there, here's my desktop, isn't that pretty? Okay, so what if I want to do, what if I want to open OneNote? I've got this program to do all these things. I can drag it naturally speaking, and open off a spreadsheet, Adobe Photoshop Elements 11, or OneNote. So I'm going to just tap OneNote, and it's going to open OneNote for me. And that makes it convenient too, because I don't have to go flying over to the uh, uh, Start menu or go to the taskbar and find it, click it. It's just, it's just going to come up, and it makes it really quick. So there we go. That's OneNote. Now we're going to get rid of that, and now we're going to go into making a how, how to program the thing how to set it up and I am going to open a bring up Photoshop I've done a whole bunch of them already and I'll show you what that means Photoshop is here and it's probably the granddaddy of all uh, digital editing programs now I has got a now this is my Wacom tablet properties as it pertains to all these different things now this is all others that's what I did for the uh, the desktop and this is what I have there. Copy, cut, paste, undo, OneNote, elements. Okay. Photoshop is just the default. There's nothing there. Photoshop elements, it's got all its things, all its uh, shortcuts here. Uh, Corel Paint Shop Pro, it's there. And I click on this. I can add XMind. That's the one that the uh, mind mapping program. This is all of it. And if I wanted to add another program, I just click here. Yeah, and what do I do? Uh, Photoshop, Skype. I could just do it Skype if I wanted to, okay? And now Skype, and if I can use all, I can make photo sh or, uh, uh, radio menu for Skype, which is kind of neat. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to work with Photoshop. Okay, Photoshop. Now, what I want to do is set this to the default, and all these other things to the default. Make sure they're all set to the default. And now we're going to program it. So, let's get going with this. Now the way for me to set it up is to have one of the express keys as my way to launch the radial menu. 
and I can put it on the tablet or I can put it on the pen. I find for me it's better to have it on the pen. So I change this top right click on my pen to radial menu. Now I go to the tablet and I'm going to take this one because I never use this top left key. I'm going to make that into a click, a right click. Okay, so I've got my right click covered and I've got my radial menu covered. So I'm all ready to go here. Now, radial menu, I've, this is the default and it's, it's okay, it'll work. But I want to uh, make it mine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this, this top one here and I'm going to make that into a open and run. What that means is that I can run a program from here. All I have to do is just click on that thing, but I have to find the program first. So I'm going to browse and I'm going to add Adobe Bridge into this. Local disk, program files x86. Uh, let's see, where's Adobe? There's Adobe right there. There's Adobe Bridge. Click on that. There is the shortcut, the application. Double tap on that. It's called Bridge. Comes up here. There it is. Let's see if this works. Let's see if all this theory really works. So I'm going to access my uh, radio menu. There's Bridge. Tap on that. And up comes Bridge. There we go. That's nice and easy, isn't it? Okay, so let's get busy with this. Now that you've seen how cool this is, it's time to really get down with it. So I'm going to change this one. And I've got a list here that I want to follow. And my list is the first one is to be step backwards because I make a lot of mistakes. So I'm going to make this a keystroke. This is the keystroke defining box. And I can't go here and delete that because it doesn't work. Because it thinks that the delete is part of it. So you have to do clear. And now the delete, the step backwards is shift, no, it's alt control Z. Z, whatever country you're in. And we're going to call it step backwards. There we go, and you get to hear all those key clickings. Okay, so let's try this one out. So if I take my brush tool, where is my brush tool? It's here somewhere. And I got some uh, nice black paint. Uh, well, whatever. And I'm going to make some marks. That's with my pen. And you can see how it's pressure sensitive, and it's getting darker and doing all kinds of crazy things. So now I can put up my radial menu, step backwards, radial menu, step backwards. Done. Gone. Kind of neat. Okay, so let's bring the next one up. And my next one is going to be a new layer. Because I like layers. Layers are cool. Layers are our friends. As they say, keystroke. It's going to be clear. That is Shift, Control, N. And that is new layer. New layer. Okay. Now we'll try that one. Yes, I guess it's always good to try them all. Yeah, there it is. And there it is down here. And if I don't like it, I can do this and I can step backwards and get rid of it. So how easy is that? Okay, next one is going to be the default colors. Now, if, that's, if you do a lot of Photoshopping, especially if you're doing some of the uh, dodging and burning with soft light layer and stuff, it's nice to have quick access to the default colors. Default colors are black and white. Keystroke there, clear, D, default. Okay, uh, there we go. Default colors. And because it's nice to swap them back and forth, I'm going to change that also. And clear it. And the X key swaps the foreground and the background colors. And we're going to put uh, swap foreground, background. Be nice if this is a quiet keyboard. There. Okay. So there we go. So we've got bridge, step backwards, new layer, default colors, swap foreground, background. Let's see how things work. Okay. So now I've got my brush tool, and there. And if I hit the X key, now I've got the white. And if I change that to bright red and make my brush a titch bigger, 
Well, I mean bar bigger. Yeah, let's make it bigger, not smaller. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to get my thing and we're going to step backwards, step backwards, step backwards. Done. So that's kind of neat as well. Okay, now let's go back here and try a couple more things. Uh, after this, I've got bridge, I've got my default colors, new layer. Okay, you can add in here some adjustment layers, and, and I think that is really neat. But adjustment layers do not come with a keyboard shortcuts. You've got to cut. You've got to create your own. So I've created some. I've created one for curves. I've created one for gradient map because I love black and white. And I've created one for levels. And that is all explained on the on the website on the page. So I don't think you really need to know how to do that now. Uh, if you want to make your uh, adjustment layers have keyboard shortcuts, you can do that. But I'll show you how, it, how I've done that, uh, or what it'll do with that. So I'm going to change this. I don't want capture window. I want it to be another keystroke. Clear it. Now, the my keyboard shortcut for that is Control F1. And that is going to be Curves Adjustment. Oh, I suppose I can call it Layer as well. Okay, there we go. Curves adjustment layer. Now, does this really work? Really? I mean, really? Okay, let's try this. Curves adjustment layer. There it is. And there's my curves adjustment layer. Isn't that neat? That is just kind of cool. So we're going to, going to step backwards, get rid of that. Step backwards, get rid of that. Okay, so that means it's wide open now. And it would be nice if we could move more than just two or three. And I'll tell you how you can do that. Um, okay, the next one is going to be display toggle. We don't want that. It's going to be another one. So there's nothing in here because it was a display toggle. So we're going to go to levels. And that'll be control and F3. And that's levels adjustment layer. And there we go. Okay. And we'll put in the last one just because, you know, I don't want you to go to sleep on this. Keyboard. And we're going to make the last one a gradient map, so it's going to be Control F2. And then we'll test them all. Okay, there's gradient map. Okay, so let's get out of here. Now, well, first we'll try the uh, gradient map. Gradient map. Yep. <laughs> Okay, that's not the one we want, mind you. Uh, we want that. Okay. That's kind of neat, huh? And we can get rid of that one. Step backwards. Step backwards. Now we're going to go and do another one. We'll do a levels adjustment layer. Yep. And here's our levels. And we can fiddle around with this. Move the midpoint slider a bit. And there we go. So that is how you use and how you program the radial menu. Now with the Intuos products you have eight pie slices you can program. If you've got an Intuos Pro, all of those eights can have a sub menu under them. So you can have about at least 64. Uh, so if you uh, if you don't know if you're going to get the Intuos or the Intuos Pro, probably and you do a lot of shortcuts, probably the Intuos Pro is the way to go because you get far more you can do in the uh, in the uh, radial menu. So give it a try. Have a you know, th this is really amazing. And once you get onto it, once you get working with it, you're going to love it because it really is quick, it's convenient, and it's uh, very, very uh, fast. Okay? So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. And uh, if you've got any questions, any comments, uh, certainly give me a, a shout on the uh, through the contact sheet on my website or just get back to me on this video. There's also going to be a link at the top here that will take you directly to the radio menu page. So you can uh, check these things out and learn how to make the keyboard shortcuts for the uh, Photoshop adjustment layers. Okay, so thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time. You have a good day. Bye.